What was Sigmund Freud's Oedipal Theory? The Oedipal Theory, or Freud's idea of the Oedipus Complex, was based on Freud's instinct theory that there are enduring sexual desires in the human psyche, as well as opposition to their expression. Sexuality and its opposition take the form of libido versus ego, or self-preservation in early and middle life. And the form of eros, or desiring life, versus then eidos, or a wish to die, toward the end. It's interesting that Freud thought the wish to die was a human expression of a longing in all life to return to an inorganic state. The Oedipus complex results from a situation in which the child desires the mother as a result of prolonged human dependency on one caregiver. Male children fear that their fathers will punish them through castration. Female children transfer their original Oedipal yearnings for their mothers to their fathers in an Electra complex, which is also accompanied by penis envy. This all occurs unconsciously in terms of active and passive principles that later come to be expressed and identified as male and female, respectively. Because the primary process of the psyche tends toward a cathartic discharge of repressed energy. The pleasure principle is Freud's main explanatory tool. He applied this principle to the way in which the emergence of unconscious material can account for humor and also everyday failures in function and memory. In psychoanalysis, both dreams and free association could be used to access unconscious conflicts and particularly Oedipal fantasies. What were John Stuart Mill's views on marriage? Mill concluded that human virtue flourishes best in friendships between equals, and that was his ideal for marriage. By a real enrichment of the two natures, each acquiring the tastes and capacities of the other. As a utilitarian, Mill justified this ideal of friendship between equals. For marriage by claiming that it would allow half of the human population to make contributions to civilized life, which had not yet been made. He also believed that women had already demonstrated distinctive moral strengths and altruistic impulses, so that their participation in civic life and the professions would advance civilized values in general. What was Ralph Barton Perry's theory of value? Perry wrote that value worked like a target. Any object becomes valuable or acquires value when interest is taken in it. The moral good is the promotion of harmonious happiness which is achieved when all interests are harmonized and fulfilled. What did Thrasymachus think about the concept of justice? Thrasymachus of Bithynia, F.L. 427 BCE, 
is known mainly as a character in Plato's Republic. Whom Socrates trounces in preliminary attempts to define justice. Thrasymachus asserted that justice is no more than what benefits those in power. And that it is therefore of no use to those who are ruled by them. In real life, Thrasymachus is believed to have traveled and taught throughout Greece. Besides being famous in Athens. In a speech he wrote for a member of the assembly. He advocated for Greek unity and efficiency in government. What did Paracelsus contribute to alchemy? Paracelsus, 1493-1541, shared the Neoplatonic beliefs of most alchemists, decay is the beginning of all birth. Prime matter separates out of ultimate immaterial matter and human creativity repeats this process. Time is a cycle composed of force and growing, and above and below, or heaven and earth, are the same in form. However, Paracelsus replaced the planetary theory of humors with a chemical one. Salt, sweet, bitter, sour, and the fifth element or quintessence life. His term ends natural referred to the balance of the chemical humors. And ends spiritual was the balance of the mind. Unlike many of his colleagues, Paracelsus did not think that insanity was caused by demons or that nightmares represented sexual intercourse with succubi. He taught that the mind can create diseases in itself. The body, or in the minds or bodies of others via hypnosis, magic, or ill will. He thought that most diseases are curable evils but that no doctor can correct ends DEI, or the will of God. Paracelsus was accused of heresy for his Neoplatonic notion of prime matter and for asserting that illness was not evil. Prime matter contradicted the idea that God created everything. Also, saying that illness was not evil left no room for the devil. But, after his death, his birthplace became a shrine for Roman Catholics. Who was Gilbert Ryle and what was his thesis? Gilbert Ryle, 1900-1976, was the Oxford philosophy professor who edited the journal Mind after G. E. Moore, 1873-1958. He is famous for having conclusively taken philosophers to task for talking about the mind as though it were the ghost in the machine. He attacked the lingering Cartesian idea of the mind as a non-physical entity related to the body in ways that could not be explained. Instead, he said statements that were about the mind should be viewed as meaningful. Only if they could be explained in terms of actual behavior or behavioral tendencies. How did Hobbes explain sensation, memory, imagination, thought, and emotion? Hobbes described sensations as effects of movement in 
the body that are felt through the motions of the heart. Sense always has some memory adhering to it. Because sense organs retain the movements of external bodies acting on them. So long as the organs are moved by one object, they cannot be moved by another. Imagination is decaying sense, after the source of sensation is removed. And memory is similar to imagination, except that it also has a feeling of familiarity. Hobbes believed that thought involved literal movements in the head. His idea of unguided thought led to later theories of the association of ideas. That one thought automatically evokes another in the mind. Guided thought is goal-directed. Hobbes thought that while humans and animals both may perform the action that is necessary to reach a goal. Only humans have the distinctive trait of prudence. Prudence involves beginning with the action that one can perform. And then calculating its consequences as a guide for what to do. Prudence increases with experience. Concerning the passions, or emotions, which he called endeavors. Hobbes postulated two types of motion in the body, vital motions, such as breathing, nutrition, and the circulation of the blood, and animal motion, such as voluntary movement. Pleasure is nothing more than motion around the heart. Appetite is an endeavor toward an object associated with pleasure. And aversion is an endeavor away from it. Why were the sophists important philosophically? The sophists do not have an august reputation, and their successors in ancient times particularly Plato, had little praise for their contributions to philosophy. However, that assessment may not be altogether fair. Unlike the pre-Socratics, who concentrated on the natural, non-human world, the sophists were interested in human nature and human affairs. The sophists were the first humanists in Western philosophy. We should also keep in mind that much of their thought was opposed to the timeless wisdom prized by Plato. And much of how they were characterized comes from Plato. The sophists were public intellectuals who popularized existing knowledge and wisdom. With some original modification. The subjects they addressed included, grammar, theory of language, ethics, political philosophy and doctrines, religion, ideas about the gods, human nature and the origins of humankind, literary criticism, mathematics and last but not least, speculations about the natural world that had been developed by the pre-Socratics. What was anti-Aristotelianism? Anti-Aristotelianism was a reaction against the ways in which medieval interpretations of Aristotle, 384-322b c had for centuries been accepted unquestioningly by Catholic scholars.
Who was Sigmund Freud? Sigmund Freud, 1856-1939, was the founder of psychoanalytic theory and clinical practice. He developed the idea that early childhood experience has a lifelong influence in shaping personality and character. The importance of childhood education was emphasized as early as Plato. C 428 C 348 BCE, but Freud was the first to stress childhood emotional experience. Freud was also responsible for the popular acceptance of the idea that self-understanding does not occur immediately and automatically, but requires a special kind of reflection. The ancient Greeks are famous for the maxim, know thyself. But Freud's distinct contribution was that there are different layers of the self to be known. Freud's principal works are The Interpretation of Dreams, 1900. Three Essays on the Theory of Sexuality, 1905, and Civilization and Its Discontents, 1930. Also of particular interest in his application of his theories to Healthy People in Ordinary Life is Psychopathology of Everyday Life, 1901. When discussing religious belief, which did Montaigne consider to be more important, reason or faith? In considering reason versus faith as a foundation for religious beliefs, Montaigne, 1533-1592, claimed that faith Simple belief was the best course, because all reasoning can be shown to be unsound. Philosophical views had been in conflict since the ancients, so only Pyrrhonic skepticism, with its prescribed suspension of judgment, was acceptable. There was no certainty even in the knowledge of the new sciences. Since the experts disagreed and scientific knowledge was subject to change. Who was Thomas Kuhn? Thomas S. Kuhn 1922-1996, became world famous for his idea that scientific progress requires new ways of looking at the world. He was educated at Harvard and taught at the University of California at Berkeley, Princeton University, and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He began as a physicist and then studied the history and philosophy of science. While teaching a course on physics to humanities students, he realized that Aristotle's 384 to 322 BCE physics were not as wrong as commonly assumed, but rather made sense in their own intellectual context. His first book the Copernican Revolution, 1957 Explain the intellectual transition from Aristotelian geocentricism to the heliocentric theory. But it was Kuhn's second book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. 1962, that reverberated throughout intellectual communities. 
because he showed how science proceeds by quantum leaps when new theories overthrow old theories. After Kuhn became very famous and attended a conference on his work, where everyone used his term paradigm almost as loosely as they do today, he is reported to have told someone, I am not a Kuhnian. How did William Harvey discover the closed circulatory system? William Harvey, c. 1578 or 1579-1657, was educated at Cambridge and studied at Padua. Where Copernicus, 1473-1543, had also studied. His father-in-law was a prominent London physician, and Harvey became a doctor at St. Bartholomew's Hospital and a Fellow of the Royal College of Physicians. IBN Alnafi, 1213-1288, and Michael Servetus, 1511-1553, had described pulmonary circulation earlier. But Servetus' work was lost by the time Harvey had begun his research. Hieronymus Fabricius, who taught Harvey at the University of Padua. Had discovered valves in veins, but Harvey was not satisfied with his explanation. And sought a more encompassing theory of how blood moved in the body. In his 1628 Exercitation Anatomica de Motus Cordis et Sanguinis in Animalibus. An anatomical exercise on the motion of the heart and blood in animals. Harvey claimed that the heart pumped blood throughout the body in a closed system. Galen had believed that venous blood came from the liver and arterial blood from the heart. Each of which sent blood to the different parts of the body where it was consumed. Harvey recorded his observations during vivisections, dissections of live animals. Quantifying the amount of blood that passed through the heart and counting the beats of the heart. He estimated the amount of blood pumped in a day, depending on the size of the heart. He postulated two circulatory loops one to the lungs and the other to the vital organs and he correctly described the role of the valves of the veins in returning blood to the heart. Harvey was personal physician to both James I and Charles I. That gave him the opportunity to vivisect deer from the royal parks for his experiments and demonstrations. He was also able to observe a pumping human heart in the hole of the chest of a viscount's son whose wound had been covered with a metal plate. Harvey was not able to observe capillaries and could not account for the transfer of blood from arteries to veins. What was Berkeley's critique of Newtonian science? Berkeley did not think that we can have an idea of absolute motion. Apart from particular things that move, or of absolute space, apart from specific distances. He thought that Newton's hypothesis of force and action at a distance might be useful for mathematical calculations. But that there were no grounds to posit it as a real entity.
What was Hannah Arendt's political philosophy? Overall, Arendt was a strong critic of totalitarianism and an advocate of individual freedom. Offering distinctive insights She believed that both fascism and communism arose under illusions of Inevitability based on the lack of real political community in modern life she did not consider herself an existentialist because she thought We are is a more important starting point for philosophy than I am. Her positive model of society was active citizen participation in Ways that leave social and private interests out of civic identities. Arendt's analysis of the trial of the Nazi Adolf Eichmann in which she introduced the concept of the banality of evil. Was very controversial for her criticism of how Eichmann's trial was conducted in Israel. And how Jewish leaders had behaved under German dictator Adolf Hitler. Arendt's last work was an examination of practical judgment in political contexts in which she used the figure of Socrates, 460-399 BCE, to posit inner dialogues. Conscience She said, had the role of supporting friendship with oneself. Why was Pierre Joseph Proudhon against women's rights? In his Pornocracti, 1875, Proudhon argued that if women were allowed to vote and secured other legal equalities with men, the institution of marriage would decline over time. Because women would not need men to support them financially. Proudhon thought that this single state of men and women would result in widespread prostitution. Who was Wilfred Sellers? Wilfred Sellers, 1912-1989, Goal of Combining Analytic Philosophy with Logical Positivism Resulted in his founding the journal Philosophical Studies Educated at Michigan and Harvard Universities. He spent his professional life after 1963 at the University of Pittsburgh. His work centered on the problems of reconciling the scientific worldview with our ordinary conception of ourselves as having minds and intentions in a world with meanings, sounds, and colors. Sellers developed his resolution in a union of empiricism and philosophy of mind, which introduced the philosophy of functionalism. His main books include Science, Perception, and Reality, 1963, Philosophical Perspectives, 1967, and Essays in Philosophy and Its History, 1974. What were the main facts about Wuhl's life? William Wuhl was born in Lancaster in 1794. His father was a master carpenter. And his mother wrote poetry. 
He studied at Heversham Grammar School and attended Trinity College, Cambridge, on a scholarship. He was elected to the Royal Society in 1820, when he was just 26. After being ordained as an Anglican priest a requirement for the post he was chair of mineralogy at Trinity College. From 1828 to 1832. He became professor of moral philosophy in 1838. Wool married Cordelia. Marshall and became master of Trinity College and vice-chancellor of Cambridge in two separate terms. When Cordelia died. He married Lady Affleck, who was the sister of a friend. Lady Affleck died, and then Wool himself passed away after he was injured in a riding accident. His work was largely neglected until the mid-20th century. The revival of interest in his empirical and theoretical achievements has been substantial ever since. What was Francisco Suarez's view of metaphysics? Suarez defined metaphysics as the study of being insofar as it is real being. The idea of being was analogous to the similarities among things that existed. Suarez held that everything which exists is an individual. Not capable of further division into individuals like it. Suarez's focus on the most general kinds of things that exist was echoed in Descartes' division of the world into mind and matter. What kind of a materialist was Ludwig Feuerbach? Feuerbach was an historical materialist. He sought to bring out the implicit Hegelian assumption that truth, reality, and sensibility are identical. But Fungerbach thought that by locating reason and consciousness in the absolute, Friedrich Hegel, 1770 to 1831, had alienated man's essence from him. He asserted that only a sensible being is a real, true being. And that thought is the product of this human being, and not the other way around. God or the Absolute is no more than the appearance of ourselves to ourselves. The work of philosophy was to begin with man, in his situation. Man was neither mere matter nor consciousness alone. Who was Henry Moore? Henry Moore, 1614-1687, was the great-grandson of the martyred English Chancellor, Sir Thomas More. Henry enrolled in Christ College, Cambridge, at the age of 17, and remained there his entire life. He became a fellow in 1641. His distinctive mission was to eradicate, or cure, Atheism and enthusiasm, which he called two enormous distempers of the mind. He sought to convert philosophers to the Christian faith, as he understood it. And his interests included Neoplatonism, reports of witches and ghosts, science, and René Descartes, 1596-1650, philosophy. He differed with Descartes, however, 
in insisting that animals have souls. He attacked Thomas Hobbes, 1588-1679, and Benedict de Spinoza, 1632-1677, for their presumed atheism. He was a tutor to Cambridge Platonist and Conway, 1630-1679. And deplored her enthusiastic conversion to Quakerism. He is said to have coined the terms Cartesianism and materialist. Henry Moore's writings included a history of the English Jesuits. Translations, and his life and doctrines of our Saviour Jesus Christ, 1660. Who was Voltaire? Voltaire was the pen name of François-Marie Arouet, 1694-1778. A playwright, poet, essayist, and widely read popularizer of Sir Isaac Newton. His philosophical letters, 1734, and Philosophical Dictionary, 1764. Both express his brilliant wit and underlying sense of social justice. He made great fun of Gottfried Leibniz, 1646-1716, as Dr. Pangloss in the satire Candide, but although he thought that this was not the best of all possible worlds. As Pangloss did, he believed improvement was possible on specific issues. Voltaire's empiricism was similar to that of John Locke, 1632-1704. In that he was a moderate skeptic who also thought that human knowledge is generally adequate for the lives most people lead. In other words, we know what we need to know. He argued for toleration and objected to the narrowness of church Christianity. By the same token, he did not go as far as Jean-Jacques Rousseau. 1712-1778, in extolling simplicity over civilization. He replied to Rousseau after he gave him a copy of the social contract. I have received your new book against the human race, and thank you for it. Never was such a cleverness used in the design of making us all stupid. One longs, in reading your book, to walk on all fours. But as I have lost that habit for more than 60 years, I feel unhappily the impossibility of resuming it. What have Western philosophers recognized in Buddhism? Buddhist thought rejects ideas of substance or substances as entities that endure through time and change. Speculation about the eternity of the world, its infinity. Or the connections between the soul or mind and the body are not considered worthwhile. In the Theravada schools of thought, perceptual experience is believed to justify mind-independent entities. But we do not experience them directly. Some commentators hold that there are independent entities. Otherwise our inference from experience that they exist could not be justified. Furthermore, we do not control what we perceive. Which suggests that things exist outside of our perception. 
others distinguish between reliable and unreliable sensory experience. Some Buddhists believe that both minds and bodies are collections of transitory perceptions. According to the Madhyamaka school, there can't be individual objects because everything is dependent on everything else. However, enlightenment can result in an awareness of an underlying reality behind or beyond this flux. The Yogacara branch of this school holds that because there are no minds, there is no one to see the truth and no way to discover it. Given the lack of substances, which would include minds, all that exist are mental states. Our lack of control over perception or the apparent objectivity of things is merely the effect of our own memories. It should be evident at this point that Buddhism has grappled with the same kinds of questions about what really exists as those that have held the attention of Western philosophers throughout history. One difference is that, with the exception of ancient Stoicism and Epicureanism, and perhaps contemporary Buddhism, Western philosophers do not have life practices directly linked to their intellectual beliefs. Useful sources for philosophical comparison include Masao Abe and Stephen Hine, Zen, and Comparative Studies. 1997, Dan Lusthaus, Buddhist Phenomenology, A Philosophical Investigation of Yogacara Buddhism. 1997, and Anil Kumar Sarkar, Buddhism and Whitehead's Process Philosophy, 1991. Is philosophy just the beliefs and theories of individual philosophers? No, philosophy is a broad and messy subject. It can be divided into individual philosophers, subjects that two or more philosophers have emphasized historical periods of time, and even places such as Greece, France, Germany, England, China, Africa, India, Latin America, and the United States. The chapters in this book take a chronological approach. Identifying major themes within important time periods. Once the idols are eliminated what did this allow us to do, according to Bacon? Once the mind was cleared of its idols, it would be able to discover causes through experimentation. Francis Bacon, 1561-1626, thought that all of nature was made up of bodies or material objects that acted according to fixed laws. These laws were the forms of material objects. In seeking causes, first we must look for those things from which certain other things always follow. For example, heat is followed by a motion of particles. Next, we look for the cases where the effects do not happen when the cause is absent. No heat, no movement of particles. When what we are studying occurs to a greater or lesser degree. We must be able to account for the variation. Whenever possible, we should invent instruments to measure what we are investigating. In this case, thermometers and barometers.
What were some examples of Montaigne's famous wit? Montaigne had sayings from Sixtus Empiricus, 160 to 210 c. e. carved into the beams of the rafters of his study. His favorite, which became his own motto and the motto of the essays, was KSASJE, or What Do I Know? The following aphorisms are excerpts from his essays. Wise men have more to learn of fools than fools of wise men. From the same sheet of paper on which a judge writes his sentence against an adulterer. He tears off a piece to scribble a love note to his colleague's wife. Don't discuss yourself, for you are bound to lose, if you belittle yourself. You are believed, and if you praise yourself, you are disbelieved. Even on the most exalted throne in the world we are only sitting on our own ass. Fashion is the science of appearances, and it inspires one with the desire to seem rather than to be. He who is not strong in memory should not meddle with lying. I will fight the right side to the fire, but excluding the fire if I can. There are some defeats more triumphant than victories. Age prints more wrinkles in the mind, than it does in the face, and souls are never, or very rarely seen, that in growing old do not smell sour and musty. Books are a languid. Pleasure. Even in the midst of compassion we feel within I know not what tart sweet. Titillation of malicious pleasure in seeing others suffer, children have the same feeling. Few men are admired by their servants. The greatest thing in the world is to know how to belong to oneself. How did Spinoza's system solve Cartesianism? Descartes' division between mind and body depended on the existence of two separate substances. Mind and material body, in addition to God. For Spinoza, there was but one substance, which was also God. That is, the human mind and the human body are the same exact thing, but are understood in different ways. We do not think of one thing as interacting causally with itself. So Cartesianism could not even get started as a problem in Spinoza's system. Which early American philosophical strains were most influential? The thought of several Native American orators, the St. Louis Hegelians, the transcendentalists of New England, and writers on evolution all influenced pragmatist philosophy, either directly or by their emphasis of what were to become enduring American themes to be taken up by pragmatists and others. What did Aristotle think about government and politics? Aristotle believed that human beings are social by nature. So the right form of government is necessary to support happy and self-sufficient citizens. 
he posited three main forms of government, each of which could degenerate. Monarchy that could fall into tyranny, aristocracy that could fall into oligarchy. Rule by a few based on wealth, and polity that could fall into democracy. Like Plato, Aristotle viewed democracy as mob rule because the great masses of people in their day were uneducated and unrefined. Aristotle thought that the best form of government was polity, a kind of democratic rule within an aristocratic class. Where turns were taken for top positions and all of the privileged members had their say. How did George Santayana spend his last years? T. The outbreak of World War II, Santayana found himself in Rome. He was unable to access his U.S. bank accounts and so took very modest accommodations. In the Clinica della Piccola Campagna di Maria, clinic of the Little Company of Mary. This clinic was run by an order that, because of the color of their habits, were known as the Blue Nuns. Santa Yana ended up spending 13 years there, until he died. Originally, he stayed on because he liked the safety of the convent as a refuge from the war. But in time he came to appreciate its old-fashioned ways away. From the hustle and bustle of modern life, for their own sake. For example, how is the mind connected to the body? Most of us know that if we want to raise our right arm and we are not paralyzed. It is the easiest thing in the world to do we just decide to do it and the arm goes up. But ever since the work of the 17th century philosopher René Descartes, 1596-1650, philosophers have argued passionately among themselves about the right way to describe the connection between the mind and the body. Who was Thomas Aquinas and what made him known as the greatest medieval philosopher? St. Thomas Aquinas, 1224-1274, was born in Rocasica, Italy. He began his religious studies in a Benedictine monastery and studied liberal arts at the University of Naples. He entered the Dominican Order of Preachers when he was only 20. He studied theology in Paris. Attaining his doctorate in 1256, and taught there until 1259. Aquinas then lectured on theology and philosophy at Dominican monasteries near Rome, and then returned to the University of Paris. He taught for a year in Naples in 1272. Aquinas died near his place of birth. While traveling to a church council in Lyons. During his teaching career, which spanned from 1252 to 1273, Aquinas wrote extensively. He lucidly solved long standing problems in the interpretation of Aristotle, made clear distinctions between Christian theology and philosophy and demonstrated how the two were compatible on many subtle points.
Who was G? Emor. George Edward Moore, 1873 to 1958, successfully revived epistemological and metaphysical realism and supported a common sense philosophical method. He spent most of his career at Cambridge University. Becoming a professor there in 1925. As an undergraduate, Moore was a member of the Cambridge Apostles. A select intellectual group of Cambridge University undergraduates. He was editor of the top analytic journal, Mind, 1921-1947. Moore's main books are Philosophical Studies, 1922, Principia Ethica, 1903, and Some Main Problems of Philosophy, 1953. What was G.E.? What was W? V. O. Quine's holistic view of knowledge? Quine's holistic view was his positive account of knowledge after he attacked the second dogma of experience. That single statements or parts of a theory can be confirmed independently of each other. Quine thought that all of our scientific and lay theories were interconnected with the most general and abstract truths for example, the truths of arithmetic in the center of a web. Toward the periphery of this web were more specific generalizations and factual claims that were easier to give up in the face of an experience that contradicted them. It is this aspect of Quine's thought that places him in the tradition of pragmatism. What were the main ideas of the pre-Socratics? Thales, C. 624 C 545 BCE, Anaximander, C 610 to 545 BCE, and Anaximenes, C 580 to 500 BCE, who were all from the city of Miletus, thought that the natural world was made up of one kind of material, such as water, the unbounded, or air. The unbounded probably meant something like what we mean by something that is infinite. Pythagoras thought that everything was made up of number. This did not mean that everything was based on mathematics, as we might think. But rather that numbers themselves were real things that existed in everything else that existed. Heraclitus C540 to 480 BCE noted that the world and things in it are constantly in flux. And he claimed that change was more important than what the world was made up of. Parmenides. C515 to 450 BCE on the other hand thought that change requires that things come into existence from non-being. And for that reason he believed that change was not possible or real. Heraclitus and other Milesians held that the real stuff or substance that makes up the world cannot change. So that to account for change there has to be a number of substances making up the world. Empedocles. 
c 495 to 435 bce built on this idea to posit the four elements earth wind water and fire anaxagoras c 500 to 428 bce thought there were more than four basic elements perhaps as many as an infinite number democritus c 460 to 371 bce posited that everything is made up of atoms What kind of a Marxist was Jean-Paul Sartre? In his Introduction to the Critique of Dialectical Reason, 1960, Sartre first claimed that his own existentialist philosophy was merely an addendum to Marxism as an historical process. But when he went on to explain what he meant, he said that the success of Marxist liberation for the oppressed would be necessary for the freedom he had described to be accessible to everyone. In other words, he saw the goal of Marxism as the realization of the very freedom he had described. In one sense, this contradicted his description of freedom as a universal human condition. But in another sense, Sartre believed that the oppressed have the power. Based on their individual freedom, to unite and cooperate for collective liberation. So, although he embraced Marxism, he did not embrace its premise of determinism that the individuals Consciousness is the result of the political and economic factors forming his or her social class. Did Plato change his philosophical theory of forms? In the Philebus, one of his later works, instead of equating the good life with contemplation of the forms. Plato acknowledges that pleasure seems to be an important component of what is good. He then explains how goodness consists of proportion, beauty, and truth. And argues that intelligence is better than pleasure because it is closer to those three. This was a new, more down-to-earth theory of the good life for Plato because it suggested that the best life for a human being was a life of enjoyment of what seemed to be real, rather than a life dedicated to contemplating the forms. Who was Leibniz? Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, 1646-1715, was a German philosopher, scientist, mathematician, and historian famous for his metaphysical idealism as well as his epistemological rationalism. In addition, he made contributions to the fields of astronomy, biology, including embryology, engineering, information technology, law, logic, medicine, paleontology, philology, sinology, social science, and topology. The calculating machine he invented could add, subtract, and calculate square roots. His plans for invading Egypt are said to have been used by Napoleon. Leibniz also kept up a voluminous correspondence throughout his life.
Was Isaac Newton rewarded for his scientific discoveries? Relatively poor and without family wealth or a patron, Newton finally received the comfortable position. As warden of the Mint in 1695, he administered the complicated project of recoinage with expertise. Echoing Copernicus, 1473-1543, contributions to recoinage in Poland about a 170 years earlier. Recoinage involved calling in all of the coins in circulation and exchanging them for new ones. Perhaps like Copernicus, and also having the benefit of Gresham's law. That bad coinage drives good coinage out of circulation. Newton knew that the presence of bad coins meant that people were hoarding the good ones. This was a serious economic problem at the time because England was an economy based on cash. And transactions depended on having enough physical money, or coins made of silver, in circulation. Newton's Rico image required calling in all of the silver coins that had been clipped for their metallic value, chunks literally cut out of them around the circumference and reissuing milled coins that could not be clipped. Newton also advocated that counterfeiters be hanged. What has been Arnini's philosophical influence? Nice, 1912, broadest influence has probably been from his overall sense that there are spiritual, if not religious, values in our proper connection with natural environments. People should respect and care for such environments as an elevated activity. Many contemporary environmentalists, theoretical and practical, Share Nice intuition that human beings benefit from contact with nature and animals in deeply nourishing ways. That cannot be duplicated by commercial forms of entertainment, or even human interaction. Acknowledgement of such benefits has led virtue ethicists such as Thomas E. Hill Jr., 1951. To claim that how we treat non-human beings both reveals our own character and partly constitutes it. In contemporary environmental debates. Another way of stating the deep shallow ecological distinction is via instrumental and intrinsic values. A being has intrinsic value if it is good in and of itself whereas its value is instrumental if its good is what it is good for. This theoretical point is important ethically in thought going back to Immanuel Kant, 1724-1804, which distinguishes between categorical or absolute imperatives and hypothetical or instrumental ones. But whereas Kant thought that the only thing with intrinsic value is the goodwill of a rational creature, a human being, some environmentalists have extended intrinsic value to all living beings. What are Venn diagrams? British philosopher and logician John Venn, 1834 to 1923, invented the system of logic diagrams named after him, which consisted of the overlapping circles. 
they can be used to test and demonstrate the validity of inferences. Venn diagrams illustrate collections of sets and their relationships to each other, which are useful in logic theory. A Venn diagram of sets A, B, and C, where one or more sets overlap, it means that they have members in common. It can be seen by the overlapping in this diagram that some things are A, B, and C. Some things are A and B, some things are B and C, and some things are A and C. What ideals for scientists did the early Royal Society promote? After a rejection of Aristotelian ideals of certainty in scientific knowledge, members of the Royal Society sought what was no more than probably true. Their ideals included open mindedness, cooperation, and goodwill toward colleagues. It was as important to know what one did not know as assert what one did. Here is how Thomas Spratt, in his 1667 History of the Royal Society, described the virtues of a virtuoso the natural philosopher is to begin where the moral ends. It is requested that he who goes about such an undertaking should first know himself, should be well practiced in all the modest, humble, friendly virtues, should be willing to be taught and to give way to the judgment of others. And I dare boldly say that a plain, industrious man, so prepared, is more likely to make a good philosopher than all the high. Earnest, insulting wits, who can neither bear partnership, nor opposition. For certainly, such men, whose minds are so soft, so yielding, so complying, so large, are in a far better way. Than the bold and haughty assertors, they will pass by nothing, by which they may learn. They will be always ready to receive and communicate observations, they will not contemn the fruits of others' diligence. They will rejoice to see mankind benefited, whether it be by themselves or others. What was Jean-Francois Lyotard's view of postmodernism? Lyotard defined postmodernism as incredulity toward metanarratives, or a skepticism that is not satisfied by legitimate orthodoxy. An example of the sort of narrative Lyotard had in mind was the Enlightenment. Account of the triumph of rationality and the liberation of the rational subject. Lyotard proposed that little narratives about unique events be constructed instead. In his The Differend, 1983. Lyotard considers disagreement between or among participants who cannot agree on the rules. As a result, the dispute cannot be resolved. So the best result that can occur is for all sides to be recognized. Who was Otto Neurath? Otto Neurath, 1882 to 1945, 
was a polymath who had begun by studying mathematics in Vienna. Earning a doctorate in the subject in Berlin. During World War I he was assigned to the planning ministry by the Austrian government because he had earlier written about barter economies. The Marxist governments of Bavaria and Saxony hired him to implement their post-war socialist economies. He was charged with treason when the German government took over, although he was soon released. In graphic design, he contributed to the Viennese Social and Economic Museum with his invention of isotype. A system of symbols for iconographically presenting quantitative information to the public. As a logical positivist, Neurath was the main architect of the Manifesto of the Vienna Circle. Along with Rudolf Carnap, 1891-1970, Bertrand Russell, 1872-1970, John Dewey, 1859-1952, and others. He advocated the Unity of Science project, which was to result in the International Encyclopedia of Unified. Science that would unify language and method and interdisciplinary dialogue across the sciences. It was never published. Neurath's ambition was to render the social sciences as predictive as the physical sciences. His main works include Through War Economy to Economy in Kind, 1919, Personal Life and Class Struggle. 1928, Empirical Sociology, 1931, and Neurath Carnap Correspondence, 1943-1945. As well as numerous articles in edited collections, as well as work on the International Encyclopedia of Unified Science. Neurath was married three times and his last wife, Marie, carried on his isotype work after his death. What was interesting about Voltaire's life? Voltaire, 1694-1778, led a very dramatic life. After his classical education at a Jesuit school, he chose literature over law. And his subsequent satires resulted in his banishment from Paris as well as exile to Holland. He spent almost a year imprisoned in the Bastille. All of this happened by the time he was 24. Voltaire was believed to be the best playwright in France for half a century. A disagreement with a chevalier resulted in another sojourn in the Bastille. After which he went to England and learned the language, philosophy and politics of that country. In 1734 he had to flee Paris again, and for the next 15 years he studied physics, metaphysics, and history with the highly intelligent Marquise du Châtelet, in Lorraine. During this time he was also at court. Protected by Madame de Pompadour, who was the mistress of King Louis XV. Voltaire became historiographer of France and a member of the French Academy in 1746. In 1750 he was appointed philosopher-poet to Frederick the Great of Prussia, but they had disagreements after three years. Voltaire then bought a chateau in Geneva, Switzerland, and then an estate in France. In France he defended Jean Collas, a Protestant who in 1762 was tortured on the rack and executed. 
Voltaire was by then very rich and he devoted himself to causes against the oppression of the church. When he returned to Paris at age 83, he was highly acclaimed, but died soon afterwards. He was first buried outside Paris, but then his remains were moved to the Pantheon. Only to be again disinterred during the Restoration. Voltaire's body was never completely reassembled after that. How well do old philosophers receive new philosophers? This is, of course, not a matter of the age of philosophers. The old tradition remains robust. And its practitioners have repudiated each of these new philosophies as not real philosophy. Still, as their practitioners secure posts in philosophy departments, which they increasingly do, that dismissal becomes untenable. If someone who has been trained by philosophers publishes work in philosophy journals or books, is hired to teach philosophy, and identifies as a philosopher, that person is as much a philosopher as the bird that waddles, quacks, and swims is a duck. The point is that philosophers customarily disagree and repudiate each other's thoughts when they are among friends. So one would expect no less than this kind of reaction to the new philosophies who have diverged from the mainstream. What did Emile Durkheim contribute to the study of suicide? First of all, Durkheim defines suicide as follows. T. He term suicide is applied to all cases of death resulting directly or indirectly from a positive or negative act of the victim himself which he knows will produce this result. Second, he systematically catalogued suicide rates in modern society and analyzed his data into four main types. Egoistic, altruistic, anomic, and fatalistic. Egoistic suicide resulted from insufficient social ties. Altruistic from too much involvement in social relationships. Anomic suicide was the result of acute or chronic crises typical of conditions in contemporary life. Especially economic deprivation. Fatalistic suicide occurred only in exceptional conditions of difficult life circumstances. Such as slavery. He was educated at Yale, preached and knew how did the Enlightenment affect the United States? America did not develop its own philosophical tradition. Until the late 19th and early 20th centuries. In the period before the American Revolution and the founding of the New Republic, the excitement of liberty from oppressive government, the dignity of the individual, and rights to private property were all highly motivating ideas. These optimistic ideas were inspirational in the writings of Thomas Paine, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and others. 
the American separation of church from state, as an article of individual liberty against oppressive government religion. And for free thought and speech came directly from Enlightenment ideas. As did the division of the powers of government and the distrust of government. It should be noted, however, that libertinism and outright atheism were to remain European phenomena for a very long time. Under the inspiration of Jonathan Edwards, 1703 to 1758, American Protestant religious philosophy flourished. In the late 18th century in a New England born-again movement known as the Great Awakening. York City, and became a leader of the Great Awakening in 1729 in Massachusetts. His theology was a Puritan form of Calvinism. Edward's interest in philosophy included Nicholas Malebranche. 1638-1715, the Cambridge Platonists, and John Locke, 1632-1704. He was himself an idealist, similar to George Berkeley, 1685-1783, who held that human minds are made up of thoughts and sensations, God being the only true substance. 1700-1800,